Hello everyone, Darren here, and on today's episode of Watch the Academy, we're going to look at the 22nd installment of the Map Awareness series. This uh, replay was brought to you by Random Bot of the One Clan. Uh, again, I have a, uh, an agreement with Random to um, provide me some exclusive gameplay for this channel to help the beginner and intermediate players on some good dem very good demonstrations of map awareness. So, starting off right now, we are on Malinovka, and uh, he's in the southern spawn, and it's in counter. Let's, so, let's just right away, right away, realize that good map awareness is realizing that the spawn is in the top right-hand corner, and that should, that should never be ignored. Um, sometimes it works out well, most of the time, though, it really does not. Um... It tends that for lately the trend here, and this is to me, is very poor um, awareness, especially on encounter mode. Standard battles, I don't really care, uh, but on um, the uh, for like encounter on this map, it is very important that you have a decent, sizable force go to the hill. That is very important for map awareness. Just on this map alone, on the encounter game mode, is if you know you need to be aware that the spawn is on the hill and there needs to be people to go there. The river is, it's fine fight there on standard battles and team destruction, but you know, there needs to be people going to fight that. Otherwise you, everyone, and I mean, everyone is going to go do like 900 damage and that will be their game simply because no one went and fought the hill or they just go and let Joe Schmo in his little light tank go and try and spot the hill and he gets obliterated because no one went up there to support him or actually contest the hill. So that's very important to be aware of what the map objective is and to make your plan based around what the objective is. So, right, I mean, again, this is just me talking about pretty much the subject, uh, just a quick thing of, hey, this is how you play Malavnovka with this game mode. Different story on other game modes. As you can see right now, though, with the Chrysler K that he's in, I f don't think I mentioned that he's in the Chrysler K. He is in the Chrysler K. And right now he's using very good knowledge on the fact that this thing is almost a beast uh, up front, you know, frontally on side, if angled correctly. And he's about to demonstrate very good knowledge of the, um, of the uh, little, the, sta the steps, the staircase, that's it, the staircase. The staircase is a little bit on the difficult side here. Uh, the the rungs, the the steps, make it very difficult for a vehicle to actually get shots on unless you are positioned just right, as you can see. Random is here, and you know, depending on the size of your tank, it may not even be possible for you to retaliate. So he's making very good use of those stair the staircases. Another situational awareness thing that he is pay being key to is that there is already in play on the encounter game mode almost almost all the time on this map and on encounter already will focus up here on the hill so he's playing it very already safe he is aware that the, there are two already in play on the enemy team his artillery is already gone and right now it, you know he just needs to worry about what's directly in front of him and try and avoid exposing himself long enough, you know, too long for Artie to get a shot. But, you know, that's what that windmill is for. And it's if you can get there and you are a side scraping beast like the Chrysler K, you are in a very dominant position. So he's using that map knowledge of what is a dominant position good for him, and he's making use of it. Not a whole lot really much to be talking about other than the fact that he's angling very well and he's doing what he can right now. Uh, the cap out, you know, I don't think I really at this point it's just contesting the cap and stalling out. His team is losing. Um, so at this point here, capping out is kind of on the table. Uh, that is another thing to be aware with this replay is that in this type of situation you need to be ready to kind of make that call if you want to win to make the you know to just cap out random here decides you know what 
no, I'm in it for the damage, you know, I don't want the game to end this early, I'm doing alright, I'm bouncing a lot of shots, uh, I'm doing more damage than I'm taking, and so he goes and he, in a way, kinda helps reset the cap a little bit by rolling off. So, and you notice that he went back on there to reclaim his position, and the timer went down significantly. So, but at this point also, this is another situation, uh, another map awareness situation, is that he, uh, if you look in the bottom right-hand corner, more or less kind of on his position, he has been encircled. And, you know, he's kind of been watching that steadily happen, and... This is another one of those things of when do you use premium rounds. At some point during this fight, he switched to premium rounds, and that's just kind of a judgment call you need to be, you know, you know, have on the table constantly ready to go. Um, knowing when to when the situation calls for premium rounds in this type of situation, I don't mean like a difficult tank to pen. I mean more of like, you know my position is in danger of being overrun i need to make every single shot count and make them pay for every inch they gain in damage that they take and it's kind of just that call of when do you use premium rounds now random is also very good at making that call of when he can spare his premium rounds and when he doesn't and as you can see, that entire situation there, eventually it ended up coming down to just him versus a couple other tanks. And he has done a phenomenal job with, his, uh, with managing the Chrysler K that he may almost be dead, but he has done almost four and a half thousand damage with blocked over 2,700 and uh you know block damage and there's only two tanks left two versus three um technically two versus one if you discount the spgs um but of course they are still very much a danger they're spgs very smart knowledge that he's been lit long enough and he may be in a position that already might be zeroing in on him and he made a good very good call of start going straight for the church hugging the church and preventing them from getting an easy shot on him. In his current health standpoint, he's keeping his health in mind. The visual cues kind of help a little bit with that. If you are not good at monitoring your own health, the visual cues help as well. But you know, he kept aware of his hit of his hit points and he's been making moves that, you know, are considerate of his hit of his hit points. They have turned almost a straight Law, like almost a guaranteed loss and that he's turned it around back into a what could be a win I can't say if it would be a win simply because I don't know what the last tank is alive at this current time and I don't know the health of his teammate I do know that he is definitely a one shot even, even a breath of HE could potentially knock him out but what you can see right now is that now they're looking for the TD uh Little surprise though that he didn't go and check the little back frozen lake, but you know, chances are is that the TD wasn't sitting back there because they were winning. So chances are the TD has made it a aggressive push somewhere. Not a whole lot to talk about really. It is Malinovka. Uh, more along the lines of this replay was simply a very good demonstration of hit of hit point management, uh, positioning your tank. And um, kind of just making the right call of when to use uh, the premium rounds, the good stuff. Um, Malinovka is one of those maps where more or less, you know, there's only really one way to play it. Malinovka Winter kind of throws that concept out the window a little bit with this frozen river. But more or less, the core concept of this map does stay the same where the hill is the most important spot on the map. Um... People tend to argue that that's not the case anymore, but, I mean, again, it's still he who holds the high ground tends to have the advantage. And, again, that's a debatable concept right now. But not a whole lot to talk about again right now. They're just hunting the TD, and, um, yeah. But, yeah, hopefully, more or less, you uh, have, uh, oh, boy, it's kind of, 
not gonna lie, it's a little bit difficult to come up with something when you already covered all the core concepts and everything like that. But, um... Yeah, no, essentially going back to how Malinovka is, the, the key idea when it comes to Malinovka is that you gotta keep the hill in mind. You can almost always guarantee there are gonna be people going up to the hill. It is only like maybe one in like 20, 25 games or so where you will find almost no one goes up the hill. But, um, you know, sending your entire force onto the river, almost if you, if that, especially if that team stalls out on their side of that frozen river uh, coastline right there, um, embankment, you have almost straight up guaranteed a loss if you cannot push up off, push up into their side of the river and off the river. You have essentially wasted valuable time and resources there. And if you stall out, you are essentially kind of just now fish in a barrel. You are stuck there. Your only safety is down that that embankment, and it's exposed. You require the, taking the river requires a heavy amount of momentum. So it's always a healthy decision to at least have half the force go river to try and prevent or stall a potential enemy push from the river. But also having the other half moving up the hill to pretty much essentially do the same thing and still take the high ground. If you can control the high ground, you can then have lights and mediums kind of patrolling around the the middle lake there on the edge, skirting around. Oh, we finally found the, uh, the TV, the SU-152 or the ISU, whichever one it is. And, um... And it's, uh, yeah, more or less at this point, now the game is essentially over here. He uh, did bounce another shot, and the uh, ISU-152 manages to take the kill and secure the win. But that concludes it for today's video on the map winner. Sorry for the long, drawn-out, kind of dead conversations, uh, rehashing a lot. But I'd like to thank you all for watching. Again, I'd like to thank RandomBot for the, uh, the replay. Uh, the link to his channel will be in the description. And uh, until next time, this has been Darren of Watsi Academy.